Welcome back to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined by my co-host, Monk. We had three amazing matches. We had Forsen, Hyped, Tides of Time advancing to top four, and now it's all it all comes down to Trump, the owner of this channel, big shout out to him, versus Strife Crow, TSM versus Cloud9. Monk, who do you think is going to win this? I mean, if it continues the trend of kind of the underdogs prevailing, I would have to say that Trump is probably the favorite in this match. He hasn't had a, as great success as Strife Crow, but if if uh, there's anything that Trump can do really well, it's getting to the round of four in tournaments because he's done that so often. In the last three or four tournaments, he has gotten to the round of four, uh, but unfortunately, he's kind of stopped there every single time. We'll see if he can do this yet again in uh, the HCC Invitational. Well, this time Trump is playing on his own channel with the support of all the Trump fans and um, and his fan base. So, you know, and he prepared for his tournament. He is top 15 in the world, I believe, uh, in the ranking. So I think he has a good chance. And he, as you said, like, uh, if the underdog wins, then uh, Trump is uh, his favorite to win. But let's talk about the lineups first. Like, Trump is bringing a lot of control lineups. Um, control Warrior, a very tone-heavy druid with Kalfazad. And uh, I don't exactly remember his third deck, but I believe it was also... Something anti-aggro, right? Yeah, so I wouldn't say it as control decks. It's more of anti-aggro decks. And I think that's actually certainly very uh, a very smart decision just based on the metagame right now, which is just uh, a lot of aggro decks like Mech Mage, like, uh, like Zoo, and of course the Hybrid Hunter, which is perhaps the most threatening deck yet. Also, we have the Grim Patient Warriors, which just overall, they're just very good against... Um, uh, against decks that don't have big taunts in them. Um, unfortunately for Trump, Strive Crow will be bringing Handlock, so that might be a deck that Trump might struggle with, ex especially with the Ramp Druid that doesn't have combo in it. Oh man, there is a chance that we are going to witness Handlock versus Handlock again. I'm so excited to see that. But before we go into the game, can you please remind us about the giveaway, Monk? Because we are giving yeah. stuff to our viewers. Guys, we yeah, can get stuff. Lots of stuff. Um, we're giving away 12 t-shirts, two tablets, and one phone. You can uh, play Hearthstone and actually three of those items, but unfortunately, the technology doesn't exist yet to able to play Hearthstone on t-shirts. Not yet. You can't play Hearthstone on t-shirts, but definitely tablets and phones are, are great to do so. Um, Hearthstone works on them amazingly. And uh, yeah, just go uh, to, the, uh, to Twitter and tweet HTC Esports. Um, that ha use that hashtag. Tell us, do you enjoy the tournament? Tell everybody that you're actually watching. If you're enjoying the tournament, tell your mom, tell your brother, and bring them and uh, make it a family watch. We are not using any swear words, I believe. We only say, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, v very uh, PG. Very PG yes, cast. PG friendly. Okay, so uh, Trump versus Strive Crow, TSM versus Cloud9. I'm excited. And uh, players are not ready yet. We can look at the bracket now. We are. We had a, a couple of cool stories. Uh, yesterday, we had um, well a lot of Team Liquid players eliminated. Unfortunately, uh, all the TSM players advanced. Oh man, one out of one TSM player advanced. Well, good job to their team. Also, the team that's sponsored one of the uh, teams that's organizing this tournament, as it is on Trump's channel, as you can all tell. Yeah. Uh, for Cloud9, we had three players advance and one player to fall. Uh, Tempo Storm, 100% players advanced. I believe every player from Team Dignit is lost in the form of Chucky losing to Trump. So confirm Tempo Storm and uh, TSM are the best teams in Hearthstone. Yeah, 100% win rate. With and a the huge players sample. Are ready. All right, Monk. This, yep. is, this is it. This is the, the last quarterfinal match. Strife Crew versus Trump, Hunter versus Druid, and Strife Crew has a, a white blanket. Oh my god. Strife Crew is so cute right now. <laughs> oh, is, that, man. is that a Cloud9 jersey or is it just a blanket? Okay, it's just a blanket, I believe. Um, okay. But you know what? Trump's hand is looking pretty amazing with uh, Zombie Chow. He also has just a lot of removals, and I'm sure he'll either draw into a lot of taunts or um, perhaps a, a wall of growth or an innervate. Any of those would be good. It just happens to, like, this matchup is so good for Druid because there's so many taunts in Trump's deck right now. And even oh, double. Oh, wow. Double Zombie, Zombie Chow. Chow. Job done. Yeah. 
uh, this is exactly what you need. Like Trump's deck is poised to defeat all those nasty aggro decks. He is making a statement. Like no aggro deck is going beside me. I'm going to defeat all of them, smorks. And um, and you know he did it yesterday. And uh, right now he's poised really well to to win versus strife cross aggro decks. Maybe it's possible that this hunter, even though it's not fully aggro, it's kind of like a hybrid. It's possible that it's never going to win versus Trump. Yeah. Um I think before Strife Crow drew the Haunted Creeper, he actually could have considered passing and just hero powering at this turn to set up for uh, the Eagle Horn Bow, but he still does that because he's afraid of perhaps, um, if you play the Haunted Creeper, he's afraid of a Zombie Chow attacking into it and then having a hero power. So um, fortunately for Strife Crow, this is kind of ideal for him. It's the, if he didn't have the Eagle Horn Bow, which is a one of in this type of mid range hybrid hunter, then he would have been really sad. Yeah, that's true. He will be able. Oh, but there's a Slash Vulture, so with Innervate, uh, Trump will be able to protect that Zombie Chow, which is actually a weird thing to say. Protecting your Zombie Chows? Why would you ever do that? Yeah, zombie Chows, MVP. So, uh, it's a very awkward turn for Strife Crew again. Playing the Pilot Shredder, it just gets traded down by the um, Sludge Vulture. Playing the Haunted Creeper plus Mad Scientist. If Strife Crow is only running uh, Freezing Traps, then the problem is the Zombie Chow can just uh, proc the Freezing Trap after killing the Mad Scientist. So, that probably isn't the... It might, it might be the play, though. It might be the play though, like the only one yeah. that's left for him. Just, it's it's the it's it's the best mm -hmm. bad play. Yeah, uh, and it enables pilot the shredder, uh, like the, the wait a, uh, yeah the shredder into abuse the surgeon next turn because you're probably going to have a minion one of the spectral spiders left, so you will be able to get some value uh, from buffing those mi uh, those minions and that will be your turn five into a turn six high main. Uh, he is spend he is losing a beast though, so he won't yeah. be able to use kill so commands. Immediately after. Yeah, so many good uh, options for Trump. He can wall growth, wrath, or keeper. I kind of like saving the keeper here though, because hmm. high mains. Um, if Trump saw the last games, he knows. Yeah, exactly. High mains. You nailed it one hundred percent. You could actually just proc the creeper and then wrath and hero power here. Although I kind of like wall growth. Here. I don't think the one uh, damn from the Spectral Spider really, really well, is that impactful. The thing with Wildgrove is that if you Wildgrove now, um, you are giving yourself a better chance with um, future draws, but right now you don't have those cards that you would really like to play next turn. Yeah, but then I again... I really agreed with what Trump did. Yeah, especially that Trump... Trump is running um, Engine of War, um, and he's having like more 7 drops. He's having a Kalthazad and basically a heavy deck. So having that wild growth on a turn where he is able to cast it without problems is a, is an excellent play. All right, so uh, another bad turn for for Strife Crow. I don't kill know. the shred. Like even if he kills the shredder, what's what's the secret by the way? Uh, it's almost certainly freezing trap. Okay. Uh, mass over. Yep. Yeah, it seems to be the exact uh, deck list that Protohype was running to rank one Legend Ladder. And Strife Crow, even though like he does come up with a lot of his own decks, especially uh, when de when when the new cards are released, he is um, a net decker at the same time. He does net deck quite a bit. So this play, he's trying to get more value off his freezing trap. But he has to spend a lot of resources in order to do so. Yeah, but he still ends up with the board. And um, Freezing Trap is so important versus Druid. Just getting those big minions uh, out of the way. And uh, wow, there is an Ancient of Lore top deck. So Trump can just coin the Ancient of Lore, draw into cards, making his hand much better from now. And uh, unfortunately, I think we lost Monk for a moment, but Trump is getting Ancient of War, Swipe, and uh, with that hand, he has almost all the tools he needs. Um, unfortunately for him, there is that Freezing Trap that will stop 
the attack, but another Ancient of War just building up its own wall. No silence for, for Strife Crow, which is one of the best answers against uh, the 510 Blueberry. Um, here, not attacking is, is possibly um, the way, especially after seeing High Main. You might be thinking, hey, okay, I'm, I'm seeing High Main, so Freezing Trap is definitely a possibility. Uh, but even if, if he attacks, he will be able to re replay that Ancient of Lord, draw more cards, maybe even heal if needed. Trump has all the tools he needs here. All right, I'm back. And wow, I see this is a fantastic, fantastic position from Trump. Like you said, just all the tools. He can silence the high main. He can play a second Ancient of War if he deems it necessary. I don't know what Strifecrow can do to come back. Yeah, another question is definitely what Strifecrow can do here. And, and um, he knows that the silencing Hyman is a possibility. Maybe you do sacrifice your Hyman here. If there will be like a Leoc, let's say, then um, Strifecrow will be able to trade into that into that Ancient of Lore and still maintain the board. Uh, so Leoc into Pilot the Shredder would be amazing. Um, if that's a Huffer, let's say, he can still kill the, um, the Ancient of War. Uh, kill commands. It's certainly an option, maybe less less risky. Pilot to Shredder is definitely a card you want to play this turn. Yeah. This seems like the strongest board possible for Strife Crow. But again, um, Strife, uh, Trump has all the right answers. Just something simple as um, a Keeper of the Grove and Swipe does fairly well against this board. Even Keeper plus Wrath plus Hero Power deals with the board. Uh... Even like Wrath first and then see what's, happen what's happening. If there's like one uh, Toughness minion, then Swipe and Hero Power is enough. So I like Wrath and Keeper first. There is a Brewmaster, um, which is not amazing, but not terrible as well. And Trump is going to kill this boar almost entirely, just leaving one hyena laughing at him for a moment, but not be, not really being threatening. And he still has that Ancient of War and um, Keepers and Ancient of Lore, so basically everything he needs. Strife, Strife Crew will need an amazing series of draws. A lot of huffers to get Trump lower. Have, uh, have we seen an RMB gal in this game yet, or in the series? If no, not, I like, there's pretty so. much no way for him. I'm yeah, if, if not, there's like, there's no way for Stripe Crow to get past the second adventure of lore when it eventually comes down to it. And yeah, just clearing the board fully. Uh, Leopard Dome, kind of a bottom deck here. Yeah, right now, Strife Crew, what Strife Crew can do is just go for face. That's the only uh, curse of action. Unless he's running an explosive trap and uh, hedges his bats that uh, he gets one. But just going for face and hoping for a quick shot into kill command might be much better. That Lepernum is still dealing two points of damage. Yeah, exactly. But after that, then what? After that, he top deck, and that's it. Like uh, he's still not out of the game. He still has a couple of turns, but there's um he knows that Ancient of Lore is in hand. It will heal. Uh, now it's Haunt Wall. You know, like an Iron Big Owl into All right, Iron Big Owl is not doing much actually. Yeah, you, you basically need something else. Maybe a even oh, Quick Shot is amazing. Quick shot is amazing. You quick shot face, and if there is a Get second a quick command? shot or kill command, that's it. All right, Strife Crew. Okay, so yeah, this is a good play. He's just getting the traps out of his deck, uh, maximizing the chances to get that uh, kill command. Filtering the deck. Can Strife Crow get a kill command? Not yet. And as if, what's the trap? Because Strife Crow still has time. Even if Trump heals now for 5, he will not be able to use the hero power. So he will be at 7. This means that um, if this is an explosive trap, if, this is, is, it's, if it's being procced, the kill command hero power is lethal. Quick shot into kill command is still lethal. 
But you know what? As this is the proto hype list, there are no explosive traps. And I think, uh, yeah, Trump definitely needs to proc this trap right now. He just needs to go for face as much as possible, raise yeah. the hunter at this point. Not give any Trump objects. Gonna, yeah, Trump is going to be scared that the card that Strife Crew is holding, holding is it's some kind beast. of beast. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so you do hero power here, um, but still Trump is in an amazing position. He's not winning next turn, I believe. He has 12 plus 6. That's 18 points of damage, 2 damage off lethal. But then Strife Crow. Can Strife Crow top deck anything to win? If Trump uh, is going to use the hero power, that's 6, 4... He needs a second quick shot into more damage. That's pretty much it. Um, Al wouldn't do it. Kill command wouldn't do it. Yeah, I but guess then, a uh, quick shot, a quick shot into an owl would do it though. Oh true. wow! Even more, even more of an anti aggro choice than mind control tech just counters aggro decks perfectly. All right, so Trump just patiently maintaining his. Uh, Position here, securing his win, trying to deny any top deck possible, setting up lethal next turn. He's so close to winning. Yeah, he's just playing around that heal bot that's pretty much in every hundred decks these days, right? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Not playing around Molten Giants. That's an Iron Bigao, but it's not enough, I believe. The two damage from Glaive Zuka plus two is four. No chargers. And that will be it. Trump will win the game. Not even a way for Strife Crew to stop it. Yeah, it's actually this game was actually fairly important for Trump to win. Because if this deck got matched up against, let's say, the handlock, Trump would be heavily unfavored. Yeah. Without burst, burst is uh, the force of nature combo is exactly what um it's exactly what Druid needs to in order to win this game. Strife Crew is trying to buff his own hero with Abusive Sergeant. It's not yeah. working this way, Strife Crew. We are so sorry. But we are happy for Trump what? winning the game number one on his yeah, own yeah, channel, yeah, yeah. securing the, the Druid. Well yeah, pretty close game, I would say. Even though we are really hyping this matchup to be extremely heavily favored for Trump, we just kind of see how strong this Hunter is. Yeah. Just able to deal so much damage to Trump and almost closing out the game in the final um, rounds of the game. If he had top deck to kill command in that crucial turn, he would have won, actually. Yeah, also like getting Iron Beak earlier, uh, it was possible to, to win that way as well. Uh, but then Trump had um, an advantage like throughout most of the games. And uh, most of most of the game, just you know, uh, setting up those taunt, taunt walls, having heal, uh, having those keepers, uh, making great decisions. So right now, uh, Strife Crew is... Uh, down to well, Strife Crew has to use all three decks. Um, and do you still go with the Hunter or do you just swap things up a bit, mix things up, roll a die? Uh, rolling a die sounds like a, a good choice. I, I mean, I know a lot of casters like they like to talk about should I pick this deck or that deck, but in the end, uh, to be honest, a lot of it does come down to just being as unpredictable as possible and thus, um, just rolling a die, just picking a random deck essentially. All right. And for Trump, he's just going to go 50-50 on his deck lists. He still has the Control Warrior and uh, the third deck, which is uh, Handlock. All right, so Trump's going to go with the Control Warrior. Game number two is going to start. Trump versus Strife Crow, TSM versus Cloud9. Uh, Strife Crow is going with Hunter again. Oh, yeah. man. I actually would say that this deck, or the Warrior, is actually probably slightly favored against the Hunter. And my reasoning is that because this is a hybrid Hunter, it has sort of the weaknesses and strengths of both the Phase Hunter and the Midrange Hunter. Uh, phase Hunter is obviously disadvantaged against Control Warrior. And Midrange Hunter, that matchup against Control Warrior, is heavily debated. A lot of players think that the Midrange Hunter is heavily favored. But after talking to a lot of Midrange Hunter specialists like Jab and like Nine Man, they've told me both that it, this matchup is kind of closer to 50-50 than most people imagine. So a deck like the Hybrid Hunter, that's kind of a mix between the two versions of uh, uh, popular Hunters that were played before, I would say that the Control Warrior is favored there. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. Uh, like most of the time, it comes down to turn six high main. And if there's a way to, if Warrior is able to set up answers for the high main, 
And uh, if Hunter misses the high main, then Warrior is enough to just stabilize the board, put those uh, Belchers, and just, just answer it maybe with Savannas as well. So early game weapons are really important. Armor Smith, uh, Trump gets the weapon. He has, uh, he has the Shield Slam as well. A pretty good start for Trump here. Uh, for Strife Crow, it's uh, not terrible, it's decent. He just needs to draw into that high main uh, at a key moment. Pilot Shredder is very nice as well, if he gets yeah, he's one. Being very aggressive here, but unfortunately he's going to be punished. A lot of players, I think, would have played this game a lot more slowly. Um, just dropping the Mad Scientist on two, um, dropping the Animal Companion on three. And that would actually um, have been better if Strife Crow had known that Trump had, um, had the Fire War Axe. But you know what? The chances of you having a fire war axe on turn two are slightly less than fifty percent. It's around forty to fifty. So I think Strafko was just playing the odds there. Oh wow! Trump's pick up uh, picks up the Death Spite, which is an, another amazing card uh, versus this matchup. You are able to trade your min with the minions and then um, maybe even use it to dismantle the high main. Yeah. So uh, probably an animal companion will come down in this turn. Yeah, almost certainly an Animal Companion. None of the other options look very tempting. And if it's a Leoc, that'll actually be pretty horrible for a Strife Crow. It's a Huffer, though. Yeah, Huffer is fine. Uh, you will be able to kill that Armor Smith. Um, going for face is an option with so aggressive hand. Because the trap is a Freezing Trap, right? Um, yeah, almost certainly. So you might actually kill the Armor Smith to, to protect your Freezing Trap. I'd say so. And you basically, you're forcing your opponent to have a Cruel Taskmaster in order to get rid of this uh, Huffer very efficiently. Yeah. Uh, Trump has a lot of options. Um, execute is fine. It's um, Shield Slam would also be fine, but then you have that Shield Maiden. So you have an amazing activator. Shield Maiden Shield Slam is one of the best ways to uh, deal with the Hymen as well, like a later Hymen. Yeah, but you know what? This is actually one of the strengths of the Hybrid Hunter, and that it runs a lot of like these bursty cards. Like, of course, it runs Huffer, uh, Wolf Rider, Leopardomes, um, and these cards are in Phase Hunter. Usually, you can deal with them fairly efficiently with like just shield slamming them. But you actually don't want to waste your removal on shield slamming Leopardomes in this matchup because, of course, there are high mains and there are low thebs. Yeah, that's true. Um, but this situation with that Death Bite is really dire for Strife Crew. Even though he's going to deal some damage here with those Leper Gnomes, um, his hand is not really good. If he falls up with Wolf Rider and a, and a Hero Power, it's some damage there, but uh, you might just uh, not play anything. Just go with those Leper Gnomes. Trump will have to remove pass. them. Yeah, unfortunately for Trump, oh my god. He has Poison. his uh, choice of six drops here. I probably would prefer the Shield Maiden here, actually. I like Torison because then you'll get the, the free um, Shield Slams. So yeah, now you true. have a lot of a lot of flexibility. Yeah, and uh, the only weakness of this play, I guess, is um, if your opponent draws into an Eagle Horn Bow very soon. But, you know, this deck list that Strife Crow is running only runs one Eagle Horn Bow. So it's not as likely. Look at that amount of damage. Seven damage. Face. Just testing, testing Trump if he has enough heal. And right now he can actually uh, shield slam both of those one health minions. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, but that's the play. You do shield slam the one health minions, armor up, yeah. pull yourself up, and uh, then you you you're actually fine with the freezing trap. Yeah, freezing I traps... think. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine because uh, if your opponent had high min on turn six, he probably would have played it, especially with a freezing trap on his side of the board. So yeah. you can kind of do. Okay, my opponent doesn't have high main, so I can sort of quote unquote waste these freezing traps. That's true. So Trump is up to 16 points of health. Um, where Strife Crow has, he still has options. He can still be a really aggressive. Um, Arcing Golem Hero Power. That's six points of damage. Next turn, he he will have Dogs, Kill Commands, and Hero Power, which is essentially nine plus. Oh, 
Oh wow, wow there's like Stra oh, this Alex Straza after arcing golem, he can just play it here. This is crazy. He can attack face with the shield mate and get it back to hand. And then kill the 4 2 with Torison, play Alex Straza, get out of range. Oh my god, that's insane. Just Trump getting way too me. much health. Especially after using a lot of bursts himself. Strife Crow out of cards. Torison doing some work on that Shield Maiden. However, that sounds. So, do you have, do you want to freezing trap here? Probably not. Uh, freezing but, trap? You mean unleash the hounds or? No, I mean like if you attack Mad Scientist into five one. Uh, I see. To stop Alex Straza. You might at this point. I think you might want the freezing trap actually, uh, because it, it essentially stops Alex Straza completely. Yeah. Maybe you attack with the uh, Mad Scientist into Thorzin and then you go to face with the two hounds. That makes sense, yeah. You stop you stop Alexstrasza this way and uh and you still try to, to deal that damage. Yeah, at, like with this play you can actually try to race your opponent. And wow, this is actually, actually of... Yeah, it, actually I, I was thinking last turn Trump actually could have considered playing the Shield Maiden in, instead of no the Alexstrasza for this very reason. Well, Trump is still in a very good position, uh, position here, and uh, Strifecore just has to continue going for phase and hope that he's going to eventually kill Trump. But then that Shield Maiden is annoying for sure. Not really working well with the Freezing Trap. Basically, Freezing Trap just providing five points of health, uh, for, of health yeah, to Trump. And uh, Strifecore might want to think about his own health as well. This is tough. I think uh, you might have to kill Command on this turn because in future turns mm -hmm. you don't have um, you don't have options, or if you don't draw into a beast, you won't be able to activate this kill command. He goes for this kill command on the Shield Maiden, which is essentially five damage to face. He's going to kill. Is he going to kill Savannas? Uh, I think you you want to put as much damage to face as possible after you kill the Shield Maiden. All right, but, kill but you do kill the Shield Maiden. Actually, yeah, at killing Sylvanas doesn't do much, um, because it just like yeah, she, killing Sylvanas just like doesn't do much because the Sylvanas will go back into your opponent's hand anyway. But it still stops uh, Alexstrasza. It's like yeah, I, kind of like something is being stolen, so it might actually not work there because uh, your opponent's getting a minion and can't. Uh, if you can't kill the minion, it, it's going to proc the. Um, the freezing trap, so I can I can get behind that for sure. So here's the question: um, Does Trump just lose now? Because I don't see a way for him to. Uh... Well, he can go back to eleven, and uh, if he uses Sylvanas to. Okay, so he procs the freezing trap with Sylvanas, and yes. then he can kill. The what does pilot. he kill? How much damage is, in, uh, is there on board? That's 6, 8, 10. So what he can do, he can actually go for face with Alex Stras, I believe. He can gamble that there is nothing that will deal 1 point of damage from hand. Alright, so Trump is going to gamble here. Going, setting up lethal next turn, I believe. And uh, with Strife the, Prince. Yeah. With this era, he can hopefully... He can actually force a tie if Stripe Crow doesn't draw anything with his Sarah Awakens, and he actually does get his Sarah Awakens. He doesn't! Oh my it's a god. Keeper. It's a blank! So many damage cards in Stripe Crow's deck, and he gets nothing here. Wait, this has a very good chance of getting a tie, because Stripe Crow will probably go for all for face here. I wonder. Um, he can't possibly clear. And then Trump, he doesn't have any way to win on the next turn without using a Sarah Awakens. So he might just kill himself with the Sarah Awakens unless he tries so to second cards. shield maiden or or shield block. Yeah, exactly. So this is really exciting, Monk. What are we going to see? There's two dogs, two dragons, one spider, and one BGH in this scenario. Strifecrow versus Trump. Uh, Strifecrow might be thinking: uh, Is there any merit in attacking 
Alex Traza, maybe, with the 4 3. What am I going to get from Pilot to Shredder, and how is it going to enhance my situation here? So, I guess just going for face of everything and using the hero power. Now it all comes down to what is Trump going to draw? So, Trump needs shield block, shield. Taskmaster uh, is also cutting it. Yeah. Gromash. Taskmaster or a weapon. Oh my god, Dr. Boom isn't it. I think this Wait. is a draw. Yeah. Actually, it is a draw, and you have to go for the draw, right? Oh my god. Is there any way? Monk, is there any way? Can you see anything here that is going to help? Um, I don't even... like. Is there anything that can come off the piloted shredder? I don't think so. That will help Trump? Like a Doomsayer? Alright, so Doomsayer is pass... Oh, not really... No, the Doomsayer is not... Okay, Doomsayer is actually okay, right? Like, you attack into Pilot the Shredder, there is a Doomsayer, you attack into the 1-2, okay. you armor up, and you pass. But then again, you give Strifecrow a chance to top deck anything that is going to deal 1 damage. Any card that deals 1 damage is going to lose Trump this game. So oh I my god, I think, I, th I think Trump's gonna go for it. Um, Dr. Boom into Yasser Awakens. Yeah, oh I think he's going for it. The epic draw. One of the first draws I've ever seen in professional Hearthstone. That's oh true. Oh my god. Here on Trump's channel, HTC Invitational. Uh, well, I I'm sure Trump is uh, very happy to be making Hearthstone history with that first draw. Like, has there been a draw ever in Hearthstone? I think there has been in smaller tournaments, but never in such a big tournament such as this, right? Yeah, in top four especially, versus such like renowned players. Monk, we don't have an overlay for a tie. What are we going to do now? I don't know. We just have to twiddle our thumbs and hope for it. So I guess we're going to replay that game because uh, like, there's no other choice. Oh, man, it's going to be Patrol call... Warrior versus Hybrid Hunter again. I'm calling the admin right now. Dude, calm down. Trump, try the series. What are we going to do? Oh my god, guys, tweet at, uh, make sure you guys tweet with the hashtag HCC Esports if you're just really excited about that draw, as I, I'm sure I am. Sarah awakens. She awakened and she killed everyone, like, you never wa you never should uh, wake Sarah up, man. It's it's dangerous. Yeah, it's like a sleeping giant, essentially. But wow. Is Sarah, it, it seems like is Sarah awakens, like, is Sarah itself is a dragon, it's like the ultimate resident sleeper of Twitch chat, right? Actually, now that I think of it, um, this is actually was the second draw in professional Hearthstone history. Because there was one match between Number Guy and I believe Kalento, where uh, Boombots like, made a draw. Boombots plus Explosive Trap caused a draw. But this was certainly a more exciting draw because it didn't involve Boombot RNG as much, and it was kind of a guaranteed draw with the Acero Awakens. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And we are going to jump into game number two or three. It's, I can, I'm super confused, but we're seeing some Lepronomes. Same decks, guys. So, all right, we, we, we're joking a lot about the tie, and we are super ex excited about it. But what happens normally, and what is happening now, is that players are just going to rematch the same game. So Trump forced a tie, not giving Strife Crew a chance to top deck something to kill Trump. He basically reset the game. Right now, they have to remake it, same decks, um, same strategies, try to draw the same into the same cards, basically, and then decide who is going to win, who is going to lose. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, very... <laughs> Again, Trump has weapons, but he might need something else here in order to deal with, like, this Leopard Gnome, for instance. And he gets Armorsmith, a pretty good draw. So, very similar opening for both players. There is a high mid though for Strife Crow. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, Unleash the Hounds, not really great. I, I would definitely say that this draw favors uh, Trump a lot more. Because he has the Armorsmith to deal with um, with this Leopard Gnome. Oh, he's, yeah, he's gonna play the Armorsmith. He has the Fired War Axe to deal with the Knife Juggler. And then Strife Crow just, just have to draw into a 3-drop, into a 4-drop, all uh, up until high main. He, oh, uh, yeah. Trump even has yeah he even has a Death Spite to follow that up for an Animal Companion or a Piloted Shredder. He has an Acolyte for card draw after that Death Spite. And Sylvanas for the high main. Exactly. 
And Sylvanas is a lady that can definitely tame that lion. But uh, right now, Strifecore is missing that free drop and four drop, as he said. Animal Companion, Pilot Shredder, something like that. This is looking bad for Strife Crow and great for Trump. This is gonna be a key turn for Strife Crow. He needs an Animal Companion or an Eagle Horn Bone here. Even a Mad Scientist would be good. An Arcane Golem, no. Da this is a free drop. So if he was wishing for a free drop, he got it. But uh, I don't like playing it here. Uh, if, you, if you play Arcane Golem, you probably just attack into armor smith. Uh, going for phase with no follow up is just bad. And uh, giving one mana to warrior, enabling a death spite. Yeah, this is bad monk. You might just hear a oh power pass. Strife Crow, he's uh he's doing a signature talking to himself. Like he does this on a stream, and uh, little do most people know, but in tournaments he actually just talks to himself in order to figure out the best play. Sometimes it's good to vocalize your thoughts. Like when you say what you think out loud, then you hear it and you analyze it. Uh, a lot of players they don't talk to themselves and then they do something stupid and then they, they blame themselves. Like that was so stupid. And Strife Crow will never do that. He will say it first, and then it's like, oh, this is so stupid. I will never do that. Yeah, back in the ESGN days, um, it was like very surprising when I first saw Strife Crow play live that he was talking to himself, but he was making such good plays every turn that I was like, hey, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should start talking to myself more. Oh, definitely, Monk. You should start talking to yourself a bit more. Maybe then you'll play a bit faster. Oh, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> This is something that not many people know, but Monk um, is one of the reasons why Blizzard implemented the rope. Uh, it's actually me and Trump, actually. We're two, we used to be two of the slowest players in Hearthstone. But uh, I have to say, like, we only, like, you can see Trump these days, he doesn't actually play that slow. And I think we both had a discussion where we only played slow because, um, because like, we were allowed to play slow. Like, there was no time limit on turns whatsoever. But fortunately, Imagine. Blizzard f fixed that bug. Imagine casting Life Coach in Harson Beta without oh without a rope. It was like after two hours, mm. yeah, he is on turn three, still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Monk, uh, Strife Crew is not really drawing anything. What do you think he's going to do here? This is uh, kind of one of the weaknesses of this kind of hunter, to be honest. It seems like there is like uh, no synergy now. Uh, and mm -hmm. Just you know, normally when you play face hunter, you do have a lot of face cards, so you can just close your eyes and go so, go go for face. With the midrange hunter, you don't draw into arcing golem on turn three. You have always something you can play, like even a web spinner that will give you a, another beast. So you have those plays. Here he's just kind of stuck between two strategies, not really having a follow up and not really having any synergies with uh, cards in, in the hand. So this uh, knife juggler, essentially, he's going to hope that it deals three damage to his opponent's face. He's essentially using it as if it were uh, kind of a worse wolf rider. All right, so being Trump, you might consider a high main being played on six. How do you prepare yourself for a high main? You do have armor smith, which is great. So you can get some armor. Do you play... Acolyte of Pain, maybe armor up, and um, I don't like using shields some that much. But then again, uh, you are at 18. If you use your weapon to kill uh, Juggler, as you said, it will deal 3 damage to face. So you're dropping pretty low, it's 15 already. And uh, Strikefor had a lot of cards in hand that he's not using, so Trump might be thinking, burst. Exactly. This is uh, actually the key turn of this matchup. Turn 5 is the warrior and turn 6 is the hunter. You basically need to set up as uh, best as possible here. Oh wow. And the uh, iron. iron Beak out. Yeah, what a great uh, like tech choice for it, just specifically against hunters. Trump yeah, really showing that he's very in tune with the metagame and he's bringing decks that are really great against what he expects everyone else to bring. That Iron Beak is not only excellent because it's a great inclusion to deck, it's excellent on this specific turn 
because it will be so easy to deal with the high main. Wow, Harrison Jones as well to counter all the all the weapons from from Strife Crow. Yeah, I really have to say this does seem like Trump's tournament to win because he's bringing so many great uh, de uh, deck decks specifically for the format and specifically against the metagame. Just simple inclusions like Harrison Jones and RB Gal in his control warrior, and also just the general decision to bring Ramp Druid is just really great from Trump. Really amazing. I definitely agree. And right now, Strife Crow, again, in such a bad position. What is he going to do? Like, Alnish here just to kill, maybe deny the Armsmith, but still, that Acolyte of Pain is going to draw cards unless there is a Freezing Trap. But um, Trump is back to 24, 25 at this point. Um, having that Shield Maiden, having Death's Bite, like, Trump has all the stuff he needs. Yes. Oh, man. He even has uh, other tools like Harrison Jones in order to deal with weapons. Just has yeah. all the answers here. If there is like a high main top deck by Strife Crow, it will only ter uh, hurt Strife Crow. Because possibly Trump will be able to just shield slam his own Savannas and steal the high main. Yep. And uh, wow, Trump with even more heads up play just um, setting up the shield maiden in order to get freezing trapped because he just wants all that extra health gain. It's pretty much the perfect uh, answer to freezing trap against hunters. That's true. So Strifecore having one of the bigger minions in his deck being Lothab. Blocking the shield slam, but uh, Trump will have ways to deal with this anyway. Is there any other play for, for Strife Crew? I think Strife Crow, Golem... Strife Crow might actually consider Unleash the Hounds and kill commanding the Shield Maiden. Just because he really doesn't want his opponent to get the Shield Maiden back. Yeah, she's just providing health. So like, if you kill command Shield Maiden, you're dealing 5 damage. And if you don't kill command shield maiden, you are like your opponent is gaining five health, so it, it kind of nullifies itself. So kill command here into shield maiden makes a lot of sense. It's, it feels so bad for Strife Crow again, though. I mean, having a acolyte of pain freezing trap doesn't feel good, but having a shield maiden freezing trap feels just as bad. And when you're a hunter player and you're having to use kill command on minions. Probably something is going poorly. Yep, that's true. But at least he has two dogs. He will be able to attack with his dogs, right? Yeah. Faithful, good old dogs. I would Just like to... Around. I would actually like to see Trump not attack here because he has the Harrison Jones in his hand. So even if Strife Crow had an Eagle Horn Bow on the next turn, then he could just... Um, he could just like use the Harrison Jones anyway. Yeah, and then Get draw an extra card. Charges. Abuse of Sergeant is not doing much. Yeah, but I guess this play plays around Abuse of Sergeant a bit. Uh, simply because if uh, Trump were, or rather Strike Pro were able to kill off the Abuse of Sergeant, or kill off the Acolyte of Pain with the Abuse of Sergeant, uh, it would have been decently bad for Trump, I'd say. Like having the Sylvanas freezing trapped. So what do you do here, Monk? Do you because Sylvanas is contesting Lothab, do you just run both dogs and Arc and go into Sylvanas and then play Lothab? It seems so bad. Uh you can also go for Abusive Sergeants, Arc and Golem, Hero Power, and go for face with everything. To ignore Sylvanas, because you can't really deal with it. Yeah, no good choices here. Alright, so I believe Strife Crew is deciding to go for face. Uh, going for face being the only way to deal with this situation that's terrible. Yeah, it's a smart choice, especially because Trump doesn't have any more heals. But he has just so much HP at this point. And a Sludge Belcher to boot. Uh, is there any way to... He can actually play two weapons uh, and uh, kill everything. Yeah, I like that actually. So Death Spite first, then Fireworks. There is a whirlwind effect, killing the one health minions. And, and then you, know what? you can even uh, shield slam the arcane golem 
Yeah, to keep the and, five four on board. Yeah, and then just go for face with the Sylvanas because you want to deal as much damage to your opponent's face as possible. Yeah, I like it. And you still want to armor up this turn anyway, so... So it's six mana, eight, nine. Perfect turn. Yeah, just like... Uh... Like, as if it were a ladder game, I think I would have give, given up a long time ago in Sharp Ghost position, and he's just uh, getting out of here for a while, because I think he knows that it's he's in pretty dire straits. Sharp Ghost left for a moment. He was just... I, 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 I can't watch this. This is too much. Oh, yeah, obviously, I attack first as well. Good call. Just being as safe as possible. Yeah, and now Strifecore is still in the same position. Lothab is getting contested by that, by that, uh, by that Sylvanas. And um, Animal Companion, if that's not Huffer. He needs Huffer. Like Huffer, Huffer in the Sylvanas, and then play Lothab. Uh, it's actually quite unfortunate. He actually can't play both these minions unless the Animal Companion rolls a Huffer. So he's probably just going to load them in Hero Power here. Yeah. And uh, I guess saving the the animal companion is all right because it is a beast after all, and you can uh, use it to, for instance, um, activate a kill command later on, which you might need. Yeah, and here Trump can just uh, be aggressive, just play BGH, Sludge Belcher, uh, armor up, and set up a kill next turn. It's not like Strifecore is going to use. Um, I think he used double on Niche the Hounds this game. Yeah, exactly. So Trump doesn't have to play Unleash the Hounds. There's pretty much nothing else that Strifecore can use to clear this board. So I think this, this is going to be game over. Trump wins the regame. Yeah, he ties the first one. Gives Strifecore no chances to top deck the lethal, which was very possible. And then he takes it with his warrior. And there is that Huffer, but it's not enough for Strifecore. So Trump is going to win with that Control Warrior. Lock it. And then he only needs one more win. With, with his handlock against all three of Strifecore's decks. Yeah, normally I would say that handlock is unfavored against this kind of hybrid hunter. But, you know, Trump has been bringing such good tech choices in all of his decks that I would actually say that maybe uh, Trump's handlock has, like, tech cards, like two double zombie chow, for instance. We've um, seen them, actually. A, yeah, double zombie chow? I've, I think we've seen that double zombie chow from Trump. Because Trump was so anti-aggro, and um, I think we've seen a lot of anti-aggro and double zombie chow, especially in uh, Druid, but I think in Handler we've uh, we've seen those as well. And uh, Trump was one of the first guys who was actually promoting uh, double zombie chow in, in Warlock. Like A lot of people started copying him because he was playing in a stream here where you're watching, and um, it worked. Great anti-aggro. Anti yeah, not only double zombie chow, but maybe even he, if he brought an ooze into his handlock, I would be pretty pretty impressed there because it's also a card that's really good against Grim Patient Warrior and really good uh, against um, against Hunter, which are two decks that I expect to uh, be a lot of in this tournament. Yeah, so um, excellent again, excellent lineup from Trump, and um, working really well for him. Um, right now he's leading two o versus Strife Crow, so uh, we are going to see in a moment what is Strife Crow going to pick if he's going to go with the Hunter again. Or if he's going to mash, uh, mix things uh, up a bit. So, uh, Monk, I'm excited. This might be the last game of this match. Trump versus Strife Crow. Yeah, and it's actually it's going to be game four. But Trump is up 2-0. Because, of course, we had the tie. Probably the second tie ever in uh, professional Hearthstone. Yeah, that's true. So, um, HTC after... always innovating. Even with uh, Hearthstone ties, right? Yeah, that's true, man. That's true. Okay, so the players are ready getting into that game. We are going to see the Hunter again. Strifecore just keeps playing Hunter. He kn he knows that he needs to win one game at least if he wants to take the series. Just uh, uses the same deck. Trump knows the deck really well, having the handlock. What are both players looking for in the mulligans? I think uh, Strifecore is just looking to curve out really well. Um, because that is how you win against uh, against Handlock. You just have minions that your opponent has a hard time dealing with. And if he doesn't draw into the Hellfire, for instance, then he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Trump, I think his head is actually looking really good at the po at this point. Um, he probably would like some sweepers, like some Hellfires later on. 
but Molten Giants, like, are kind of the cards that you want, um, are pretty much, like, the way you beat Hunter is with Molten Giants into heals, into, uh, into Sun Furies or Defenders of Argus. And even the, uh, the Iron Beak Owl, it'll be useful against a variety of options, like, uh, Mad Scientist is a key one to Owl, because you don't want Freezing Traps to come onto the field. That's certainly true. And, um, you've mentioned it before, that this matchup is actually favoring the mid-range Hunter, why is that? Yeah, Midridge Hunter is just, it has so many death rattle minions that even if you do have the Hellfires, then there's going to be lots of effects uh, coming onto the field. So just like a lot of sticky minions that Handlock just has a lot of hard time, a very hard time dealing with. And then you compound that with the fact that there's a lot of burst in Hunter as well. Kill commands, quick shots, uh, straight from the hand. And also, of course, the Hunter hero power. That Handlock, uh, even if they get Molten Giants behind Taunt Walls, mm. they're still not going to be able to deal with those. By the way, Trump, um, th he threw away all the all the cards that you liked. Um, I believe yeah. he's he was digging for those Zombie Chows because yeah. getting Zombie Chows early is so great. And uh, getting them later, they're not doing that much. Yeah, I agree. Um, it really depends on the deck you're playing, I guess. Because uh, uh, Trump is running double Zombie Chow, he's actually way more likely to mulligan his complete hand and just hard mulligan for the Zombie Chows, essentially. Unfortunately, he didn't get them, so his hand turns out to be quite a bit weaker than it would have been otherwise. There is one now, so still, if there is a, a juggler being dropped this turn, uh, I believe a striker will also consider um, a Halter Creeper. But if there is a juggler, then a Dark, dark Bomb plus Zombie Chow will be very powerful. From Trump. Yeah, I guess I like the Haunted Creeper here. What would you expect from the Warlock? At this point, you know you're playing versus Handlock. So yeah. if you go with the Haunted Creeper, you will be able to possibly trade into something. But it's not like yeah. Handlock is going to play uh, a yeah. free drop. Yeah, exactly. But it's not like Handlock is going to have like um, really good minions for, um, for the juggles to hit, basically. It's not like they yeah. run... Like a lot of one-one tokens. So now that I think of it, yeah, just putting more pressure on the field is a lot better, um, just generally in this matchup. But unfortunately, Trump had the exact right answers, so it didn't quite work out as uh, as well as Trump, uh, or rather, as Strife Girl might have hoped. Yeah, but the play was correct. And here now, um, he can coin the pilot shredder. Unfortunately, he's going to lose the two-one. Is there anything else? Haunted Creeper, not really. Possibly he will be able to, to contest a zombie chow, but just playing Shredder on four uh, on turn three is actually amazing. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is exactly what Strife Crew didn't want. Just like Trump is able to contest the board so much with a kind of a greedy deck like Handlock, he's even going to be able to curve out really well with the Drake on four with the Sludge Belcher on five. Um, and after that, he has a really nice sweeper with Ancient Watcher into Shadow Flame. So or just be... Siphon Soul into a big minion. Exactly. Like, this might be one of those matchups because he has the two Zami Chows in his deck. This Handlock deck actually plays a lot differently than a typical Handlock that strives to get low, play the Molten Giants, and then heal back up. Trump, with his tech choices of double Zami Chow and uh, probably double Dark Bomb, his version of Handlock actually can fight for board. Yeah, but uh, but again, this is the Trump's lineup. Um, three anti-aggro decks that are countering this Hunter being, uh, even though it's a hybrid, it's still pretty much aggro with um, the, the charge minions. So doing pretty well. Right now, Strife Crew has a choice what to do. And um, a lot of people will see, hey, Iron Beak, so I need to silence the Drake. But um, here, he might also go for Iron Beak Unleash uh, next turn and try to develop something this turn. Uh, he decides to... So silence is now, get some value from the pilot to shredder. And there's Hellfire for for Trump. Does it change a lot? Or is Sludge Belcher still the best card? Yeah, this is a very interesting play from Stripe Girl. He's essentially making it so that this Twilight Drake, it actually doesn't get any good trades, even though it is And there is a Noyatron. Um, I guess that's all right. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's it doesn't. Well, you you will obviously will want something with four attack, right? To get uh, to kill that Sludge Belcher. And one two is not doing much. It's not giving uh, a lot of value to Strife Crow right now. 
He can go through Belcher with that Glaive Zuka. Unleash the Hounds, not really useful. Glaive Zuka giving attack to a Neutron might be interesting. Yeah, essentially, almost like a Cog Hammer, but no, it gives an attack to the Haunted Creeper. Just favoring the beasts. Now, this is actually going to be pretty awkward. <laughs> yeah. It's like Strifecore spending his resources to go through Slut Belcher. What a value, Sludge Belcher. It's just. Trump is showing exactly why Sludge Belcher is such a good card. Trump rediscovering Sludge Belchers. Healbot is uh, not that exciting, but. Um, it is something. It's like Hellfire here wouldn't do much. Uh, with Hellfire, you deal damage to yourself. You're not really clearing the board. There are still two Spectral Spiders left. Uh, but if you bought, you are somewhat contesting this, forcing Strife Crew. Well, not maybe not to trade, but like look at this: Strife Crew has aggro hand, that juggler, and unleash the hounds, and Trump full health, one minion, and just uh, putting Strife Crew when he wants. Yeah, he's uh, Trump at this point. He's just trying to bait his opponent into uh, filling up his board even more, so that a Shadow Flame or a Hellfire will just do terrible, terrible damage. That's absolutely true. So juggler here maybe to get the um, the knives from the spiders. But then that's yep. really overextending into Hellfire. Yeah, that just plays into Trump's hand, unfortunately. Alright, so Stri uh, Strifecore is going for a face. Trying to read that there is there might be Hellfire. Mountain Giant, a pretty good draw. Well, won't be able to I don't know if it's that great of a draw for seven mana. Uh, it's a war golem essentially. Can you play this turn? I was excited um, about Mountain Giant because it is a big minion. So if Trump will be able to put it uh, on board without paying that much cost, it's something that Strife Chrome might be afraid of. Sun and now with Tom Fever. is a right uh, later on, but I don't like it currently. Um, maybe something like, I would definitely expect some kind of sweeper to be used this turn, either the Shadow Flame or the Hellfire. And they both kind of accomplish the exact same thing, to be honest. You can't, you don't want to get into Unleash the Hounds where there is Night Juggler on the board. Okay, so okay. he's using, he's using the uh, less versatile option of the Shadow Flame that requires a minion on the board. Which is which is good, like, um, and also Hellfire would put him lower on health. Yeah, um, yeah. On the next turn, I think the main point is that on the next turn, if he has to use another board sweeper, he doesn't have to. Um, he doesn't have to Ancient Watcher plus Shadow Flame. He can just use four mana on the next turn in order to just Hellfire, and after the Hellfire, he can even fit in more stuff like, um, possibly throwing a BGH in there. That's true. And uh, Strife Crew picks Kill Command, which is a great card versus uh, Handlock. It provides you with extra reach. Job done. So here, he's putting Trump down to 9. Um, if Trump uses the Hellfire, he's going down to 6. And then a simple quick shot, there are no taunts, is going to be really troublesome. Uh, but a, a Siphon Soul is fine here, I believe. If you Siphon Soul Arcing Golem, you go up to 12, then Spectral Spiders are going to put you down to 10. Hero Power is 8. And then you can possibly die, but so it's unlikely. Possibly. So if you Siphon Soul, I guess you play a Watcher here, set up for the RMB Gal into um, Sun yeah. Protector. Mad Scientist is kind of a blank. Yeah, it is. Was there anything that Strife Crew could draw here to, to win right away? Like uh, uh, Huffer? I think Huffer would be lethal, right? Uh, 4 plus 5, 9, 11, yeah. Okay, yeah, that would be exactly lethal. Leoc? Not really? Leoc, um, Leoc would be it. Yeah, I think it's just Huffer in this scenario. If you would get like um, a quick shot, was quick shot lethal? That was six plus two, eight. No, one off. 
Yeah, so I think Strive Crow, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward play here. Just play your Mad Scientist, go for base with everything. Hope for the best. Uh, he is not in a bad position. Uh, if there is no heal from Trump, Strife Crew will just continue doing damage with the hero power, and he has the kill command, his finisher. Uh, Unleash the Hounds is providing him a beast. So even if there is a taunt wall, he has some reach. He has a second kill command in his deck. He has, I believe, what, double quick shot? Oh, wow. Go Using on. the dog now. Pretty so he's all putting Trump to, to seven, which means that. With the beast? Oh, a Shadow Flame. Hmm. Trump needs to heal. Is there any reason to tap? Not really, because then kill command and hero power kills you. And that maybe that that's why Strife Crow actually uh, used Unleash the Hounds to put Trump exactly on seven. Because yeah, if Trump taps, he's dead. Exactly. So really smart here. If you Shadow Flame, there is going to be a secret. This is tough. You will have six mana. You will have to kind of develop a Taunt Wall. So what you can do is you can play Iron Beak Owl, silence the 2-2. Uh, you can Shadow Flame the Iron Beak to clear the board and then play Sun Fury to have a 4-5 Taunt and pass and then hope you draw into Draxus or a second heal bot you know uh maybe what would be better there instead of silencing the mad scientist is possibly silencing the um Shields up. what's it called silencing the, uh, the ancient watcher ancient watcher exactly so then you can um, proc the freezing trap with the Sunwalker, or rather with the Sun Fairy Protector. But actually, this actually turns out pretty well for Trump, because if he had gone for the play that I suggested, uh, Strife Crow wouldn't have, possibly wouldn't have drawn into this freezing trap. Yeah, but still, Strife Crow is in an amazing position here. He just needs one more turn. He just, he doesn't even need anything. Like, he needs Trump not to draw into a heal. If Trump draws into a heal bot, or if Trump draws into Draxus, or another Siphon Saw, um, he might position himself to win. But right now, Trump is dead on... Well, it's not dead on board because he can't see the kill command. But just hero power pass. Might even play that uh, Freezing Trap. Doesn't matter. Hmm. Striker is still thinking if he wants to play the Freezing Trap or not. There is no reason to play Kill Command now, uh, because if, even if there is a Lothab, it doesn't change much. And I believe that's tap for a heal bot. If that's not a heal bot, that's it. That's not. So Strife Crew is going to take game number three versus Trump with a simple Kill Command to face. Wow. Yep, there we have it. Kill Command and uh, Strife Crew is on the board. And you know what? I actually kind of like Strife Crow's chances going into this. Um, he's going to have a handlock mirror, and I think Strife Crow is going to be very, um, have a huge advantage in the handlock mirror because Trump is running the double zombie chows. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to Grim Patient Warrior against handlock, I have to give Trump the advantage there. So even though Trump has the advantage overall in the series, I think Strife Crow still has a fighting chance. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, it is Strife Crow. Like, he was um, in many matches where he was down 3-0, um, and then he was climbing up, uh, winning four games in a row. So anything can still happen. Um, and um, now Trump is uh, down to the handlock still. He needs to win at least one game to take the series. The Strife Crew is fighting back with his decks, and he's not going down. Finally winning one game for that Hunter. He tried so hard, and it's uh, paid off. Yeah. He tried so hard and got so far. But, you know, in the end, sometimes it doesn't matter. Wow. Um, that was good. Yeah, so, sometimes hey, uh, I'm, I try to out nimsh you. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed that one. So, Monk, how are you enjoying yourself? Are you enjoying the tournament? Yeah, especially since we've seen a lot of new uh, things happening. Agro Paladin, Murloc, Warlock, even a draw in Hearthstone. Who could have imagined? 
Yeah, and we are seeing some volcanic uh, drakes as well, some new decks. Unfortunately, Agropalm from RDU is out, but uh, we still have some exciting mech, deck, mech decks from Forsen. Are you excited to see like Mech Shaman from Forsen with some fur reaver action? Not so much, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure his opponents will give him a run for his money with uh, their more, I guess, creative decks, I would say. All right, so I want to use this moment as well to uh, remind all of you guys that we are running HTC Invitational, $5,000 prize pool. The winner will take 2500 Right now we are seeing Strife Corps to Trump. The winner of this is going to advance the top four, uh, which is in the money, actually. It's, it's already They are already getting some money when they advance. The loser is going to be eliminated. A big shout-out to Trump for uh, hosting and uh, lending us uh, his channel to, to be here uh, to, to show this tournament to you. And shout-out to our viewers watching. And uh, Monk, what do we have for our viewers? Because we do have a giveaway, I believe. Yeah. Well, while we're going into this uh, possibly final match of the round of eight, we have to say we there's a lot of giveaways. There's t-shirts, there's tablets, there's a phone that you could win just by tweeting at HCC and hashtagging HCC Esports. But let's get on to the next game. It's going to be Handlock Beer. And even though Trump, we said he's going to be disadvantaged in this matchup because of the he, double zombie chats he's running, his opening hand is excellent. Yeah, it is. Um, I believe you do mulligan away the Molten Giant, but having Dark Bomb... Do you do you mulligan away Dark Bomb? Because you do want to have Mountain Giants, you do want to have Twilight Drake. Molten Giant is nice, but it's not like you will surely be able to play it. And uh, for Strife Crow, he also has the Mountain Giant. Obviously, B BGH is, is huge. Sun Fury, not so much. Mortal Coil is nice, but having an Iron Beak might be, be much better. Yeah, I think uh, I, I don't think Dark Bomb is that great in this matchup. But I'd rather have like a second Molten Giant or a second Mountain Giant rather, maybe a Twilight Drake. Just all your big uh, four drops, I'd say. Just all your big threats. Uh, the answers to big threats like BGH. Farseer. This is so anti-aggro. Amazing. Actually, last game if uh, Trump would get a Farseer, it might have been uh, different as well. Yeah. So. What I'm suspecting here is Trump probably runs double uh, double anti kill bot and a Farseer. Yeah, that's certainly possible. All right, so um, let's review this matchup again. It's a very intricate matchup where players will try to play Giants, counter the Giants, play Twilight Drakes, counter Twilight Drake. But uh, what it comes down to is like who's getting lower, who's able to play Molten Giants first. When the Molten Giants are being dropped, who can have the big Shadow Flame? And a big Shadow Flame might decide the matchup. Uh, if there is a Lothab, another key card, blocking that key Shadow Flame, then the player with the with Lothab is going to make it. But uh, Strife Crow is playing faceless. This is old school. Yeah, back when Strife Crow was just dominating with Handlock all the time, faceless was a card. And it was so good because when you played Mountain Giant on 4, your opponent had to deal with it. And if they didn't, um, they would have to deal with two Mountain Giants, essentially, because of the Faceless Manipulator. This uh, a Zombie Chow is actually getting some work in, and even though it doesn't matter, it's still useful for Trump, because if he draws into an RMB Gowl, and his opponent plays a Twilight Drake, then um, uh, the Zombie Chow will actually get some value, which is... Some value is actually uh, more than no value, which is what usually happens in this matchup. That's absolutely true, and uh, that's also because Strife Crow goes for an 8-8 Giant instead of tri Twilight Drake, because there will be a risk of an Iron Big Owl. But yeah. uh, Trump is able to BGH right now. Yeah, normally you would, um, I guess in this matchup you would favor the Giants because they oppose your opponent's Drakes, but sometimes you do go for the uh, Twilight Drakes first when you have both Drakes and Giants. Oh, but if you're running side. Faceless and you draw Faceless, I think... Uh, the Mountain Giant is the clear choice, even though it can get countered by BGH, for instance. So now being Strife Crew, do you go for Twilight Drake to have better trades here, or do you go for a second Giant? Um, I would be afraid of going for a second Giant. You can lose it here. Yeah, but, definitely. But then again, just tap Giant. It's uh, such a powerful play. 8-8 eight, eight free drop. Is there a better free drop in the game? I don't think there is. This was such a powerful play that we actually lost Monk. Um, so now for Trump, so many cards. He is not suspecting that faceless. 
playing Twilight is not really going to deal with this with this Mountain Giant, so uh, Strife Crow might be able to just copy it with Faceless. And uh, one of the strategies is that if you can't deal with the card, you just ignore the card and go around it. But can Trump really go for face? Dealing that 4 damage was excellent, because now copying it with Faceless, it not, it's not the best play. There is an Iron right. Beak and Mortal Coil, though. Monk, are you back? Yes, I am back, and that seems to be like the clear play. Just getting rid of that Twilight Draken. Unfortunately, uh, Trump, without Dark Bomb in the previous turn, he actually doesn't have a really good way to deal with this Mountain Giant. You said Dark Bomb is not good in this matchup. Did you lie? Oh, Monk lied, no. I mean, it's generally not good, but situationally it can be good, I would say. Situationally, it was amazing at that moment, but... Um... I like how Trump attack into that the giant with the BGH. Yeah, he just have to guarantee some value out of that BGH, or it might have just gotten dark bombed or even hellfired. All right, so uh, Strife Crow choosing not to attack face, just uh, dealing with that uh, zombie chow. But then he is getting closer to molten giants. I think Stripe Crow can, he can't make the read yet that his opponent doesn't have a Hellfire. So I'm not sure if like attacking the Zombie Chow really matters too much. What attacking the Zombie Chow does do though, is it protects the um, Iron B Gal, which may be relevant if Trump plays uh, a Sludge Belcher, for example. Oh yeah, that's certainly true. So what will be the play here? Uh, Trump would love to have Hellfire. No Hellfire though. Uh, is there a Shadow Flame? I can't see a Shadow Flame. The cards are so much cluttered. So many cards right now. Sludge Belcher is contesting the Giant and the yeah, Owl so at the same this time. Is, this is pretty much exactly what Strife Crow was playing around. That, uh, that Sludge Belcher. Now he'll be able to bust through that Sludge Belcher. And he'll even be able to save his Iron Beak Owl with the Defender of Argus if he plays that. That's true. And you have three more mana to do whatever he wants. I would probably think uh, a tap is in order. He might also decide that the Iron Beak Owl isn't that threatening. Or rather, this Iron Beak Owl isn't as valuable. So he might just play a Twilight Drake instead. Or even a Sludge Belcher, perhaps. What would you rather have? Um... A Twilight Drake, which is a 4, what, 4 9? Or an Iron Beagle on board? I think, well, obviously, I think you'd rather have the Twilight Drake on board, but Twilight Drake is going to get value in this matchup regardless, and the Defender of Argus generally doesn't get as much value. So it's just, instead of playing the strongest play on this turn, it's just maximizing the total strength of your deck overall. Alright, that makes a lot of sense, I agree as well. So, Defender Varg is going to be dropped by Strife Crow. Owl attacking to the Sludge token. There is the first AoE for Trump. Yeah, but well, fortunately, because the Sludge Belcher uh, kind of killed off the Mountain Giant of Strife Crow, he's able to play his own Sludge Belcher, or he's able to play his own Mountain Giant here. This means and that Strife actually, Crow will be able to face this it. It, it yes. But at the same time, Strife Crow currently doesn't have an answer to this uh, Mountain Giant. So if Strife Crow does decide to faceless it, um, Trump can always respond with a Shadow Flame. That's true. Double Twilight Drake. Oh man, this match is so dangerous. Like you can't you can't just drop minions without thinking through. Let's say I would love to play double Twilight, but then it plays into the Shadow Flame and. Uh, you just have to make very careful plays. You can't really attack face because if you attack your opponent uh, and get him too low, he will get the Molten Giants. And again, Shadow Flames. Yeah, exactly. A very awkward turn for Strife Crow. Actually, so let's think, I actually like, have what no idea what I would play. Here. Maybe something as simple as just developing a Sludge Belcher mm -hmm. here. And um, attacking or... two minions into the Giants. Yeah, or um, the Twilight Drake, because it's going to survive a Shadow Flame. But you still attack into the Mountain Giant, right? Like, you want to avoid a Shadow Flame on a 4-5. You want to get some value from those minions. I Yeah, I'd maybe say even um, attacking into the 
not the mountain giant, but rather the ancient watcher. Could be something he could consider. Yeah, that makes sense as well. Just uh, get, rid get rid of the minion that can be shadow flamed. And uh, those drakes are actually huge. Yeah, he's Strife Crow doing the best with what he has. He's playing perfectly around Shadow Flame. There is Dr. Boom, though. An amazing card for Trump. Yeah, Trump's going to be very happy with this Dr. Boom because he saw his opponent didn't have an answer for the 8 8 Mountain Giant. So he's almost certainly not going to have an answer for the 7 7 Dr. Boom. No Soul Fire, no, um, or rather, no uh, Siphon Soul. And no BGH either. I don't think Strifecrow is running Siphon Soul uh, at all. Yeah. Oh, Strifecrow's. Oh, it's going to be huge. But Strifecrow is one of those players that he just really detests uh, Siphon Soul because often in a lot of matchups, it's too much mana for um, not enough value. All right, so Strifecrow uses Hellfire to clear the board. Even though he didn't have a Shadow Flame, he's still fine away. For a nice clear, and uh, oh, there's the there's the dark bomb. He finally found it. And there's a free free on the board. Yeah, I said that um, Trump's deck was kind of conservative and not too greedy, but he does have the Draxus, and this might be one of those games where it actually ends up mattering. Again, uh, Trump is going for the giant play, even though it's not too efficient because it's so much mana that you would normally want um, to play this Molten Giant for free. But he, again, he's seen my opponent struggled to deal with the Giants last turn and the turn before. So he's probably going to struggle yet again with this Molten Giant. Plus, yeah, that my makes opponent, a lot of sense. Yeah, plus my opponent is at 14 health, so he could possibly play double Molten Giant. And this sets up perfectly for Shadow Flame in order to counter that double Molten Giant play. Unless Strife was actually going to play Molten Giants and kill the Molten Giants himself. Is there is there a way? Uh, yeah, the, the, now there is. Now actually he can play both. That's four, six. Yeah, he can basically play double Molten Giant and uh, kill the Molten Giant with the Dark Bomb attack and the Mortal Coil. But is that a play? Yeah, if he goes for that, it could actually be checkmate here. Just setting up lethal um, with pretty much no way for Trump to respond. Although, you know what? Trump has the coin. So if he draws into a second Molten Giant, he can play the Molten Giant and uh, maybe fit in a tap there and then coin Shadow Flame. That's true. Oh, Where is Tori, son? That's not going to be it. Uh, well, he can still set up some taunts, right? And there is no AoE from Strife Crow. No Shadow Flame there. But he has that Faceless. And now it's, it, it's a situation where Strife, Strife Crow is putting big minions on board and Trump doesn't really have a way to deal with everything that's, that's being played here. So, Farseer and Taunts, or is it... Alright, Sludge, Sludge Vulture. Yeah. Uh, he could have actually considered playing the Earthering Farseer and the Sun Fairy Protector, but yeah. I like this play more because he actually doesn't want to heal himself. If he heals himself, then drawing a Molten Giant on the next turn actually won't be an out. That's true. Well, he needs... He used the double Molten Mountain Giant, right? So he needs something to be able to to have a big Shadow Flame turn. Maybe playing that Molten Giant was actually a mistake, like getting that early on board. So now the Shadow Shadow Flame is kind of useless. Yeah. Unless he actually also, deals enough damage to those minions uh, with minion attack. Yeah. Also with the the this play, um, if Strife Crow had Faceless plus Shadow Flame, he would have just ended the game immediately. That's true, but I'm, um, he's probably not running face this. And wow, Jiraxis. what a perfect Jiraxis turn. Playing the first Jiraxis often is uh, game winning in this matchup. Alright, and killing the story, son. This means that Trump needs something with 5 attack to, to deal with both of them uh, using the Shadow Flame. Can he do that? Is there anything he can do here? He needs to tap, get a Molten Giant, and Shadow Flame that, basically. I don't see anything else. Um, he can Shadow Flame... Oh, wow. Ancient Watcher, but he will not... Will he have enough mana? Defender of Argus? Yeah, Defender of Argus and Shadow Flame, right? This is five. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow. That actually works. 
Wait, yeah, he has uh, enough mana. <laughs> that Ancient Watcher was something he needed to clear the board. That was a very interesting combination of cards enabled by Torison. Sponsored by exactly. Torison. Okay, right, so now back to the drawing board. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, Chomp, he's still in a very disadvantageous position. Because, like I said, Strife Pro, he played the... Um, he played the first Raxus, so he's going to be able to get more Infernals out earlier. And that's going to be pretty much impossible for Trump to deal with. Plus, the pressure that Strife Crow is putting on with his Infernals means that Trump both has to uh, deal with the Infernals, plus summon Draxus maybe on the same turn. Yeah, also, this means that uh, Trump might not be able to play Draxus ever in this game. Siphon Soul. Okay, so Trump is going for Draxus. You Draxus. How much damage is there incoming? That's uh, 14 points of damage. So you actually... There is one point of damage, then um, Trump is dead. He's taking the gamble here. I like it. Yep. That's, uh, that's brave. And then no and more wow. damage. So, wow, Trump can actually mount a comeback here. Yeah, that's true. He just went for the gamble because that there is nothing that Strife Crew can do to deal one extra point of damage. Yeah, wow, this is actually really amazing. Because Trump, he, on the following turn, he can summon an Infernal, Shadow Flame it, um, attack a Slime perhaps, and then heal back up with the Farseer. Perhaps even taunt up that Farseer. That's true. This is still anybody's game. I think uh, Strife Crew has an advantage here, but uh, Trump is fighting, even though it looked really bad for him a uh, turn before. But that Torison Monk, Torison is doing some work here. Yeah, he's gonna get a lot of free cards from Strife Crew. This matchup is actually amazing. I, I really enjoy watching it right now. Jaraxxus with Jaraxxus, so many minions. So much fun stuff happening. Free Sun Fury Protector. Sylvanas for four. All right, so Infernal and Shadow Flame. Or is it? Uh, well, yeah. I guess you okay. first go for the Twilight Drake, then Shadow Flame. Yeah. yeah. And then he killed uh, the one-two. So even though Trump, he mounted somewhat of a comeback, the issue is that um, Strife Crow has, still has a Shadow Flame in his hand. And also, oh, of course he has the BGH. Also, Trump, uh, he's used both Shadow Flames. Um, after you go Drax's form in this mirror, Shadow Flame is the most important card. And now that Trump has used both of them, I think uh, Strife Crow, again, is still going to be in a pretty dominating position. Also, the fact that Trump still has that one Molten Giant in his deck. How much will Molten Giant cost? Can you can oh, you play the true. Molten Giant at all? Uh, you actually can, because you're at 3 health. But still, I don't think you want to play Molten Giants, especially with the BGH in Strife Crew's hand. No Alright, so... Good news for Trump is that he still has the Siphon Soul. So he can continue fighting and trying to exhaust uh, resources from your opponent. But Strafko knows the double Shadow Flame is out, so he's going to overextend easily. Oh, there is this Molten Giant costing how much? It's 8! Because Jarax's health total is 15. So it only reduces the cost so far. So Trump can uh, make history once again by playing the first Molten Giant ever in a tournament game uh, to cost 8 mana while in Jarax's form. But unfortunately he doesn't do it. And we're gonna go on to the final match, boys. Match like game five, Monk. Strife Crew versus yeah. Trump. And uh, we are going to see a handlock, a very anti aggro handlock from Trump versus, I believe, what is Green Patron from Strife Crew. And uh, we've seen the Green Patron losing before uh, in that matchup. Yeah, it generally is a fairly favorable matchup for the Handlock, simply because of the Molten Giants, or rather the Mountain Giants, that can come on turn 4, and the Grim Patron often doesn't have a way to deal with it. In fact, I believe that because Grim Patron is so popular these days, it's um, getting...
getting Handlock back into the metagame and also pushing Demon Handlock down because the Ma Mountain Giants typically are a lot better than the Void Callers against Grim Patron Warrior, um, just specifically in that matchup. Yeah, that's true. And just uh, following up with those big minions like Mountain Giants, Twilight Drakes, can be annoying for Grim Patron Warrior only having those executes. But here we see execute already in Stripe Cross Hand and uh, Trump will have to make a mulligan. Uh, those cards are not great versus Green Patron. Yeah, it's very important to have at least one execute um, in your opening hand by turn four because you really need to deal with that first threat. Because this is a combo deck, it's a lot like actually um, the old Miracle Rogue against Handlock where you pretty much either had to have a sap or you had to set up a board in order to deal with the first Mountain Giant. So we were mentioning Grim Patron, um, and I know that a lot of people are familiar with the deck. You mentioned it's like old Miracle Row combo, but can you explain to our viewers that are not that familiar with this new build of Warrior, or they thought it's actually a fun deck where, in fact, it's one of the most powerful decks right now? How does it work? Yeah, basically, um, you have a lot of win conditions in your deck. It's just very similar to Miracle Rogue as well. You also have a lot of card draw. So what this deck actually tries to do is, is it tries to cycle through its entire deck to get that um, Emperor Thorazane. And with Emperor Thorazane, it reduces the mana cost of Warsong Commander, Frothing Berserker, and Grim Patron. With those cards combined, you can often just set up board, either set up boards that your opponent can't deal with, or just OTK your opponent with huge Frothing Berserkers. Which is amazing, just stacking your opponent with a 15 attack, Frothing Berserker, or two of them, with charge, uh, is one of the best uh, things you can do in Hearthstone. Definitely try it at home. Yeah, back okay. in the day, you could uh, you used to be able to charge Molten Giants into your opponent's face. Uh, unfortunately, that got nerfed, but you know, you can even charge something better, like something like uh, 16 for Frothing Berserkers. Isn't that more fun? It definitely is. The board shakes when you hit face there. Um, all right, so let's evaluate the hands of our players. Trump here getting that Zombie Chow, but using the tap on turn two. Uh, zombie Chow is a bit awkward. Like it's, it's all right to trade into stuff, but then you don't want to have two attack minions on board, and especially where there is a possible Acolyte of Pain, not really being able to deal with that easily. Um, yeah, exactly. Having a zombie Chow. It, yeah, Trump, uh, even though he teched in Zombie Chows against like the Hunter matchup, Zombie Chows are actually a fairly dead card in this matchup. All right, and for, for Strife Crow, he's opening hand. He has a weapon. He has some card draw. Uh, it's like a lot of people think that you want to have combo pieces in your opening hand, but this is not true. You want to draw into them. So you want to have exactly what, what Strife Crow has right now. Card draw. Slam, Gnomish Inventor, Acolyte of Pain. Um, against Handlock, that execute is amazing. So Strife Crow... In a pretty much good position. He probably would love to have a Death Spite and Whirlwind effects. Um, you you need them. Yeah, you can enable all this stuff here and cycle. Uh, he might be keeping yeah. the slam for Acolyte of Pain, maybe. Like, slamming your own Acolyte, getting two cards out of this. Basically even three, because Acolyte will, will be able to draw another one. Yeah, on turn two, Strifeco actually thought pretty long and hard about whether he wanted to armor up or equip the Fire Morax. Um, because you don't have shield slams, your armor isn't as important, and uh, your health total almost never matters in this matchup. Um, but the issue with equipping a Fire War Axe on that turn was that if Strife Crow drew into a Death Spite, he would have regretted it pretty heavily. And this uh, Fire War Axe isn't really useful in this matchup. It doesn't even, um, it's not even useful to proc uh, executes because you already have the slam in your hand anyway. Yep, that's true. And uh, for Trump, also a very weird situation on turn four where he didn't have a giant, he didn't have a Twilight Drake, but he did have that Iron Big Owl to shut down Acolyte of Pain and maybe deny a, a bit of draw from uh, from Strife Crow. Because as Monk mentioned, uh, Strife Crow will want to cycle through the deck. He wants basically to, to draw every card in his deck to use them against, uh, against that handlock to get the win. Oh. It's very important here that Trump actually was able to uh, throw down an Ancient Watcher on this turn because now he's he's set up in order to Shadow Flame this Ancient Watcher in order to deal with any huge Grim Patron boards. We've noted that Trump plays two Shadow Flame, and I believe it's only one Hellfire in this deck that we've seen already. So if we've again, seen one, yeah. Yeah, so again, this Ancient Watcher is so impactful, even though it may seem innocuous at first. No. It's so threatening for Strife Crow that 
he might even decide to slam it and uh, kill it with the fire war axe. And then um, execute the 8 8 with uh, after attacking it with 1 1. Yeah. Also, what uh, k attacking it with the fire war axe does is it gets you under 30 HP. So that battle rage actually uh, is does more. Actually, wow, this is a pretty interesting play here. One that I certainly didn't expect. All right, so he is going for the battle rage. To draw two cards. Yeah, this is um, this is surprising as well. So execute for sure. Setting up a 4-3. It's not the board you shadow flame, really. But it is... Wow. Um, Asking for some for something from Trump, and uh, Trump can just yeah. uh, play Defender Vargas here with uh, Ancient Watcher. So setting up two big taunts, uh, looking really nice. Strafko will do ha uh, will have to do something with them. Uh, already using yeah. that one execute. Taunts are s like these Ancient Watchers are so good in this matchup. Um, the Patron Warrior doesn't have any ways to deal direct damage to your opponent's face, so he'll actually have to go through these taunts one by one. Yeah, but on the other hand, Strifecore is ensuring that he has enough cards. Uh, already having Warson Commanders, great cards to have uh, to give charge to your minions. Where the previous games that we've seen that Green Patron was always losing was where uh, there were no Warson Commanders. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yet another good battle rage here. Two cards for two mana. Just um, it's better than Arcane Intellect. It's like saying to mages, "Hey, I can draw cards better because I'm a warrior." All right, so what's the play here? Um, he can still get one mana from the coin. He can play the Corsair. I don't like using Execute that much. No, you want to Execute for something bigger. Exactly. Corsair is going to protect the 2-2, two -two, um, but you might want to attack into the 5-3 to play around the Hellfire or even to deny um, Shadow Flame value. There's another Giant. Uh, very fortunate for Trump that he drew that giant, but do you actually play it this turn? Is perhaps Emperor Thorazane uh, a better play to set up for future turns? Thorazane is so tempting, just getting all those mana points, and Trump yeah, goes for uh, it. There's... Exactly. The thing with Thorazane is that um, uh, it, it's threatening enough that your opponent might just have to execute it, and it essentially accomplishes almost a similar thing to uh, Mountain Giant. Except yeah. it actually is more value, reducing all the meta costs of cards in your hand. And if there is a man, is okay. If there is a man yeah. who knows value, that's Trump. So he makes a great yeah. call there. Yeah, Zombie Chow is actually okay here because it's uh, your pro your opponent probably isn't gonna do Warsong Commander Coin Grim Patron on this turn. It's just a bit too early here. I'm just thinking if there's lethal right now. Um, I'm looking at that unstable goal top deck. And uh, trying to count if Warson Commander, Frolling Berserker, Coin, Unstable Go is going to create a lethal situation. For. Um, probably not. So there would be. There would be f nine minions on the board? Wait, yeah, nine minions on the board. And that would be uh, nine, ten, eleven. Maybe Strife Crew counted that faster than me. Yeah, it'd be 14. I count 19 damage at least. But I don't think if you will be able to go for the rope here. Strife oh can actually god. rope. Is this a rope turn? Oh my god, Strife looks distressed. What's gonna happen here? Yeah, okay, it was, it was one damage off. He somehow oh pulled my God. <laughs> Yeah, it was exactly 19 damage as I thought. Right? But you know what? I, he's just... he's going to force his opponent to have like some kind of heal. But you know what? Trump has heals and spades, and he also has a Molten Giant. Yeah, so Trump has everything. It's... Yeah, this is going to be amazing. Trump is just trying to breathe here. It's like seeing that turn, the rope, the everything running. It's like, oh my God, am I dead? I'm... I'm alive at one, and now. Oh my God! What a what a brilliant game here. 
Strive Crew is so. just, look at Strive Crew. He is like, does he have it? Both players really, really focused. Oh man, that was a brilliant turn. I loved it. So now you do play molten. Uh, you do play molten giants, and you do heal yourself with six mana. Right, you have two mana left. You can dark bomb, and uh, you kill all the other stuff, and you hope that you survive. But it looks good. Uh, but you have to execute all those those things before the rope runs out. So Trump, make your move. Can't pull a hype tier. Yeah, I'm full hyped. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna fit in like as many taunt and heals as possible, and then uh, just clear the board as much as possible as well. Yeah, and it's looking pretty, so, pretty good yeah. for um, pretty, tr pretty good for Trump, especially since there's no Grim Patron in Stripe Crow's hand. There's no Inner Rage, so he can't actually get past this um, the Sludge Belcher. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I feel like Stripe Crow made a gamble. That uh, there will be no, I guess, no heal, no taunt. Taunt will be fine. Um, yeah. Heal, heal is annoying, definitely. T to be honest, though, I feel like uh, judging from Stripe Crow's reaction, his distress reaction after he made those attacks, what I think Stripe Crow um, might not have had enough time to count the damage that he would have with the Frothing Berserker, and he thought there was a possibility for lethal there. I cannot imagine Stripe Crow saying. Oh no, it's not 20. <laughs> oh my god, that's so Strife Crow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here, um, he is actually having a, a pretty good hand still with Death Rotting and everything, but uh, he doesn't have enough mana to go through. You know, because playing Warsong and then Frotting and then charging uh, with, uh, with the minions into that Sludge Belcher might be amazing and uh, might win him the game, but this is not yet the turn to do so. So he's going for more cards. Uh, trying to set up for lethal maybe with the frothing next turn, but he needs whirlwinds. What do you even execute here? I don't. I, yeah, I think you just execute the sludge belcher. Yeah, you go for like the win kind of. Yeah, all your opponent's cars are free at, at this point anyway. Does hellfire change anything? How much damage is there for Trump? That's um, nine, twelve, seventeen points of damage plus six. So that's twenty-three. So. I guess what Trump has to do is just clear those guys, keep the taunt up, because that taunt is really important. Is it though? I think you want to I have guess, taunts. Here's the thing, I guess, because Strife Girl hasn't used Emperor Thorazan yet, um, Strife Girl can't do a turn like Warsong Commander, um, Grim Patron, and Frothing Berserker. That's just too much mana. That's 11 mana. So I guess the taunt is actually good because if he had that combination of cards, the slime would actually be a detriment. Yeah, because but now sli slime is actually amazing. Exactly. Um, no taunt giver, molten giant, uh, but no taunt giver. So he is going to to use that farce here. But you know what? If Strife Crow picks up something like Strife Crow is going to draw three cards, right? He needs a whirlwind. And a way to, to deal with this uh, with the slime. Yeah, if he had a whirlwind, he actually just went to the game here without the uh, without the slime. So is the slime gonna stay up? That's a real question. Whirlwind and execute. I, I, both executes have been used. There's the whirlwind. Oh okay. So double whirlwind or like inner rage. Inner rage, double. yeah. Second whirlwind or inner rage. It's lethal. Well, second world wouldn't, wouldn't even do it because there's only nine mana coming up. Oh, you're right. You're right. So, okay. So oh my, oh my god! god. Inner Rage. Strike the exact card the he needs. Card. This is lethal. What? Oh, he can still he can still go for it, but um, like Gromash is lethal. Gromash, Whirlwind, Inner Rage, ten damage to face. Is Warsong lethal? Can Strike was he lethal here? With Warsong, possibly there is lethal as well with Frotting. So much damage incoming. Uh, just, he just wants to kind of show off at this point. Well, actually, uh, actually, Monk, I lied. Uh, if you would get something with one attack that can attack into that uh, slime, I, f I believe it was still lethal with the frothing. Yeah, the it's real like... question is, can Strife Crow not rope on this turn? And he doesn't rope it. Wow, what yeah. an exciting conclusion.
What a series. So Strive Core is going to take game number five and the match versus Trump. But what an excellent play by Trump. Just getting there to game five. Unfortunately, um, not taking it. But uh, oh man, I'm, I'm so excited. TSM versus Cloud9. And until the last card, that one card decided the fate of the match. Wow, just uh, a bit unfortunate for Trump because he's so close. Um, just and, and yet so far. Yet again, uh, Trump kind of falls just before the round of four, and it's Strife Crow, probably, I would say, the favorite um, in this match that moves on in the HTC Invitational. All right, so we have our top four, and the top four will be Forsen versus Hyped, and then we'll have Tides of Time versus Strife Crow. So Cloud9, uh, Deathmatch, uh, one of them is going to make it to the final. But right now, guys, we are going to take um, kind of like a longer break, I, I believe 10 minutes. And after that, we will be ready with the first match, the semifinal for you. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.